USL kickoff being celebrated the entire month of March, but we're coming up on the end of that month. Will it be the Oakland Roots or Las Vegas Lights who finish the month strong here from Pioneer Stadium in Hayward, California? Happy to have you with us this evening alongside the coach, Eric Dobransky. I'm Joe Malfa. Eric, it's still early to look at standings, but we'll do it anyway because there's somewhat enough of a sample size now for these teams. Oakland well above the line, Vegas below it, but they're both on the board with wins in 2024. And setting the tone and really developing an early identity for both of these sides and both coming off different results. The 1-0 loss for Oakland at Phoenix and then the 1-0 win versus El Paso for Las Vegas. So this is where as a team, you start to develop those trends and how you respond after different results. You're looking now at Lindo Mafeka warming up. Finally, a good sight to see for Oakland. Has been injured to start this season. Their leading playmaker, their leading chance creator. They sorely missed that last week against Phoenix. We might see him off the bench today, not starting, but back in the selection fold for Oakland. One thing that has been for sure is Paul Blanchett in goal for a couple of years now, and he picked up right where he left off after being second team all league last year. Terrific command of his box. So good on communication on set pieces. Good shot stopper just recognizes those big moments that he's needed to influence matches. And you and him have the same haircut. He's been terrific so far this year for Oakland. Big stop after big stop for the Roots. Now he's going to have to have some big stops maybe tonight on Ricky Alba back from Dominican Republic and he scored on debut. And this was the only goal in that 3-1 loss against Tulsa. But they outshot Tulsa. They had 21 shots in that match. So really an offensive display that looked to carry over into that 1-0 win against El Paso and now into tonight. Well, it's not last year's Vegas. New ownership, new front office, new players, new chapter coming off a win last week. Roots coming off a loss, looking to right the ship. It's the Oakland Roots and Las Vegas Lights next. Do you like getting cash back on your credit card? A free coffee when you fill your cafe's punch card. A complimentary dessert with your restaurant order then you'll like getting a 5% discount on your electricity with AVA Community Energy's Bright Choice service. Visit avaenergy.org to learn more about AVA's low rates for electricity. Tonight's match is presented in part by Anthem Blue Cross and Modelo. Starting lineups for both of these teams. For Oakland, finally, some consistency. A lot of the familiar faces back out there. Yeah, and this match is going to be about who can impose their style of play and their identity. And for Oakland and Noah Delgado, his team is very comfortable without the ball. They, they don't necessarily always win the possession battle, but they can hurt teams in the counterattack and look for the shit and finding moments to be urgent in the final third, being able to pull Oakland out of that shape. Oakland so organized, so sound in their structure the first couple of games. And that's why, despite all the changes because of international duty, illness, injury, they only gave up one goal in each game. It's all coming down to that organization. And on the Vegas side, as they've started to find themselves, they've finally discovered what works, the mixture. And all of it has come with a tenacity and a sense of belief in the eyes of Dennis Sanchez. It's Oakland in their black from left to right. Vegas in their white from right to left. Our referee is Matthew Corrigan in the yellow. Sets the watches, sends us on our way on a beautiful night here in Hayward. Happy to have you with us alongside the coach, Eric Dobransky. I'm Joe Malfa. Oakland coming off a loss last week, 1-0 on the road to Phoenix. Vegas, their first win of the year, 1-0 against El Paso. Quick one through for Alba. So happy to have him back after his time spent the last week with the Dominican Republic. He's born and raised in Oslo, Norway, but of Dominican descent. Decided to represent Dominican Republic at the end of 2023. Made his debut in October in CONCACAF Nations League. Scored in his debut as two goals and five caps. Now an integral part of the Dominican Republic on that top line. And you see it amongst both these teams and throughout the teams in the USL Championship that when you have high quality players, they're gonna be called up to their full national team. So you're gonna be expecting some of those moments and those times and those games where you're gonna be missing certain players. And it goes back to what you said just in the open was the clear identity that both of these sides are playing with. That allows those players to step into roles and be very comfortable. Those non-negotiables, those foundational principles 
they stick true whether you know you're a starter, whether you're a role player, impact player coming off the bench. Shaw commits the foul. We'll take a look at tonight's injury report brought to you by UCSF Health and UCSF Benioff Children's Hospital. Just Riley listed this week for Oakland. A couple of guys on there for Vegas missing Pinzon, Hafferty, and Aguilar. A couple of other guys who were questions coming in the night, maybe most notably Charlie Adams. And that just goes to show you some of the adversity Vegas has faced early on this season. They've had international duty, they've had some injuries, and they even had Adams, the captain, in the first game get hurt in warm-ups before the match against Memphis. And he hasn't been able to play since. He's getting close, but not quite yet. And a free kick on the way for Oakland. Former teammates, Mark Clemente, Trayvon Reed colliding there. And those injuries early on in the season, I mean, you could look at it in a various, in a variety of different ways, whether it's it happens early, so now you can manage it the rest of the season, or you can get them fully healthy to finish off the season. But it also puts others in roles and, and has them step into roles early on in the season where you can really find out a lot about your team. Cedeno and Diaz having a conversation over this one. Ball kid in the background getting into the vibes of the supporters' drum beat. First chance of the evening. Not a free kick for Oakland. It is Diaz, good delivery. Just a little bit behind Logue. Not sure if it was just misread by Logue, who's got his hands covering his face as he jogs back down the field. Almost got there too early, tried to arch his back backwards for it. Not quite. Quality service in there, good layers, good runs. Good first free kick for Oakland. Something that you want to continue to build on. Interesting to look atop the line tonight for Oakland. We've seen Mish Nader Sheri as their main striker so far, and Johnny Rodriguez as well, their 12 goal scorer from last year. He's not available this evening, not on the bench either. Mish Nader Sheri, first couple of matches started to break out. He is available on the bench, so no Rodriguez to turn to, but Sheri is there. So it's Trayvon Reed who will cycle up top with Jesse Elsadeno, a new look tonight for Oakland. One stark contrast this week for Oakland versus last week. They didn't have any bench to really turn to. Look out here, given away on the back end by Daniel Gomez. And Hackshaw helps to win it right back. They didn't have any bench to turn to last week when things got stale against Phoenix and they couldn't find any way to create. They were still dealing with the national team call up some illnesses, some injuries, some lingering effects. Their bench, save for two players, it was all academy guys last week. They didn't have anywhere to turn. Different story this week. Brian Tamakas, typical starter, wearing the armband at times with this group. He's available on the bench. Lindo Mafeka is back. Sheri on the bench. So they do have a bench to turn to for creativity in the second half. Cozy Nasiano as well. He was away at international duty with Burundi. So there's four guys who on a given night on the bench can start. And that's what they were lacking last week against Phoenix and the week prior in the 1-1 draw against Charleston. So back at it now with a full deck of cards, almost. Still missing Rodriguez tonight, but better than what it's been the last two weeks for Oakland. And that's something that you, you're gonna see the squad rotation regardless because of, of the length of the season, what, what the season's gonna ask you to navigate. But as you mentioned, you want to have access to your players, to the full access of players in terms of knowing how you can influence a match. And, and sometimes when you have, you know, a missing piece here and there, you might not be able to influence as much in terms of coming off the bench and, and finding a, that late equalizer. They gave up that one goal, the Phoenix Rising, early in that second half, just unable to find the equalizer. Sanchez in charge of this Vegas team. Very happy with what things have looked like early on, despite the results coming out of the gates, losing to Memphis, losing to Tulsa before their win in the last one against El Paso. But they've been in a position 
where they felt the performances have been strong, the attitude, the buy-in's all there. Just a matter of a completely new team with near 100% turnover, whether that was front office ownership or the players. It's gonna take some time to gel together, happy with the early returns. And they certainly feel like three points are available for them tonight. Valentin Noel telegraphed it, intercepted by Gomez, and Cedeno slows it down. And although, as you mentioned, it's a new look, Las Vegas Lights, talking to Coach Sanchez, you get how ambitious this side is. And you know, we can get into how they built the roster, the timing, and but they've continued to layer and develop at a pace where they feel like they should be competing right off the bat. So really pleased with where his side are. And you could see it here early on. They're organized, they're collective in their press. They're turning Oakland over in some really dangerous areas, whether it's higher up the, higher up the pitch or in midfield. Chet drops it in for Reed. Taken by JC and Gondo. Speaking of the different ways they've built this roster, and Gondo comes in on loan a couple of weeks ago from Vancouver Whitecaps. Name that might be familiar to many. He was the number five overall pick in last year's MLS draft. He's seen some time with the first team. Overall, made 15 appearances with Vancouver's first team, eight in MLS, seven in other competition, be it Champions Cup or the Canadian Championship Leagues Cup. So 15 first team appearances, made 13 starts last year in MLS Next Pro, captain of that Vancouver two side. Very bright young talent. They went out and got him. And Gondo was taken fifth overall. They had the 13th overall pick that year, Vancouver. They traded the 13th pick and about $225,000 of allocation money to come up to number five just to select in Gondo. Now it's through for Diaz. For that back post, or Rosarena sees it through back side for Njai. It's blocked by Sean Smart. Where would that have ended up? if not for his intervention. Terrific tracking back by Smart. Now it's Alba. Two-man game, plays it across for Samake. Tackle made by Gagi. It looked like Samake thought he had a lot more time there to let this ball come across. Here's the block. Really good play from Oakland in the build. This ball wide to Diaz. Good ball across, just lacking that far post runner and then really good intervention there by Smart. And then the awareness for Las Vegas to turn that block into an opportunity for themselves. You talked about Ngando and you can get a clear idea of what a coach's message and, and from the staff has been when you hear it from player to coaches to throughout interviews and, and you talk to Dennis Sanchez and you hear the word protagonist a lot mm -hmm. in terms of how they want to implement their style of play and how they want to take games. Said they wanted to control the ball, control space. Whether they're home or away, they want to be the same and they want to be protagonists every game. They want to make teams figure it out, earn a result. Still waiting for a coach to say they want to be the antagonist. <laughs> I don't think that's ever been said. Yeah. That's a unique identity to have, though. How often do we see teams in this league and others where you go on the road, maybe you go into a little bit more of a shell, and, and you close things down just trying to get a point on the road. Not this Vegas team. They are open, they are free, and they want to play the same way home and away. And now they have some space now for Valentin Noel. Pushes it across for Solomon Asante. Overlap from Sean Smart. No end result there, but promising build. And it's just listen to the names we said in that buildup for anybody who maybe hasn't had a chance to take in this Vegas team yet this season. Valentin Noel was maybe the most important player on the Austin FC two team that won MLS Next Pro Championship last year. Solomon Asante, his resume precedes itself, a two-time MVP in this league. And Gondo, we've already spoken about. Alba, the starting strike for Dominican Republic. They went out, and this is not the Vegas team of years past where they were LAFC's feeder side, and it was young players, and they didn't really spend. Jose Batista came in, and much like he did as a player in his career, he swung for the fences with this roster, and it is looking very promising early on. And when you and I spoke to, to Coach Sanchez, I think the, the word that he used that really summed 
what you just set up was a collaborative effort. Mm. It, it, they, they worked together to identify the, the players that were gonna fit their system, but he also talked about the people themselves. What kind of people, you, you get to choose the people that you work with every day. And you said it, they're coming from all different backgrounds and experiences. And we see this throughout the USL Championship. And, and this is where this league and these organizations just continue to make such ascension and, and build such a solid foundation is the way they construct rosters. It's coming from MLS experience. It's coming from academies. It's coming from players like Salomon Asante that have such experience in the USL Championship. We even look to the rest of the roster for Vegas. Not available for selection today, but Joe Jiao spent a decade in Germany. He's 31 now. Spent a couple of years in MLS with FC Cincinnati. Spent time with Borussia Dortmund, capped three times for the U.S. men's national team. He was playing in Sweden last year. Same goes for a player like Alba, who was playing in Norway last year. Whether it was players that Dennis Sanchez was familiar with from MLS Next Pro that he went out and got, players from within USL like an Emre Clementa who's played over 200 times in this league, guys from abroad like Jao, like Alba, they cast a very, very wide net and they have amassed a lot of talent this year, Vegas. And they didn't shy away from what their identity used to be. Dennis Sanchez straight up said, look, we know what this team used to be. We know the reputation it had. We don't want to disrespect our predecessors in any way, but for us on the outside looking in, whether it was as people who cover the league or fans of the league, you could pretty much look at Vegas and pencil them in for a bottom two finish in the West basically every year the last few years. This is a team that has ambitions to win the conference, and it wouldn't be the strangest thing if it did happen. It's going to take some time to click because so many of these guys got here so late in the process, but you could see the foundation here. It's led by guys like this. It's Asante, back for Ngando. See Ngando goes down, free kick on the way for Vegas in a good spot. And to your point, it's about keeping it simple and, and Coach Sanchez had talked about it. It's about simplifying some of the, the foundational principles and, and the tactical principles that he wants to implement. And, and it's gonna take time. And they're gonna continue to grow in different phases here with the free kick and the scripted play here from outside the 18. These are gonna be areas that Las Vegas is gonna continue to tweak, make adjustments. But getting an early free kick here. They're gonna get a good look at how Oakland sets up. Valentin Noel and Coleman Gannon standing over it. Noel the right-footed option, Gannon the left-footed option. It is Noel scooping it toward that back post. And Gando nodded it down right at Matsoso. Assistant referee says it was already over the line, out for a goal kick. 2024 season tickets are still available. Get the most benefits and lowest ticket prices by securing your season ticket package for the rest of the year. To secure your tickets, visit oaklandrootssc.com slash tickets or call 510-488-1144. Diaz, heavy touch. Flexibility on this back line for Oakland. We've seen Diaz left and right. On a night like this where Tamakas would come off the bench, perhaps Njai gets to start left side, Diaz right side. And basically, you have the flexibility to do whatever in the second half. If Njai is the one who needs to come off, Tamakas takes his spot, and you flip-flop Diaz and Tamakas. If Diaz can't go anymore, Tamakas just comes in for Diaz. They built this roster intentionally to have flexibility in case adversity strikes. Now, I don't think Oakland thought it would strike the way it did in the first three weeks, but it's built that way. So they have different fail safes, different guys who can play different positions. It has, and a lot of credit to Noah Delgado, this organization, and the flexibility is a great way to put it is you know you're gonna have to navigate a long season. You're gonna have to navigate moments, whether it's in the game and the options that they've created within this team, but under a certain identity as well. I mean, that's something that is not easy to do. And, and that's something for Oakland and Noah Delgado. They're gonna continue to use that as their launching pad as they Go through this season. I know it's early, but the trend.
trends are there in terms of how how you want to play. But they've had to, had to make a lot of roster moves thus far this early, as you mentioned. Soso keeps his feet. Advantage played. Never really materialized. Pass back. Dangerous one. Rosarena couldn't quite come out and get it. He gets the benefit of a goal kick. A dicey moment at the back for Vegas. And you've seen it from both sides. They've been very selective with when they went to press. And good press by Diaz and good recognition there on that far side by Reed. Almost getting in and Las Vegas fortunate just to end up with a goal kick. But you've seen the turnovers on the Oakland side as well. Las Vegas baiting them into some of those tighter channels, those tighter lanes. That's why it was fascinating to talk to when we talked to both coaches this week. Neither of them wanted to bend the way they wanted to attack this game. They both were very adamant about sticking to what they do best. And, you know, you always ask the typical question, uh, typical question about the matchup. And, and, but both were very secure with about implementing their style of play, how they want to attack different areas of the field. And that's why I believe that we have a great matchup tonight. goes against Vegas. Interesting though, so far, you mentioned it early on that Oakland is okay without the ball. Vegas wants the ball. Almost 20 minutes in, it's 60-40 possession in Oakland's favor, so it hasn't really gone to script in that regard in the early going. And I think some of that is defined by where and when Las Vegas has been regaining possession. Some of it has been in moments where they do have the ability to go forward and be positive with that first touch as we see a foul here. Clashing the heads and immediately waving for both sets of trainers to come on. Sean Smart and Babu Njai, the two who collide. And this injury timeout brought to you by Anthem Blue Cross. Anthem is transforming healthcare by improving the health of our local communities. Foul did go against Oakland, remember? Both players lost out in this one, though. Yeah, both players just looking to make a play on the ball. Going back to the possession numbers, I think the areas in which Las Vegas is winning the ball, as we see this ball in the air and, ooh. All right, I mean, that, that picture says more than any words we can say. It was a rearrangement of the jaw of Sean Smart with Njai running through, but last time I checked, jaws aren't soft either. He got it on the top of his head, Njai. Both players back to their feet now, and a yellow card has been shown to Njai for initiating that challenge. Yeah, and you can see the surprise by Njai. He's saying, I got hit in the head too. As we saw on the replay, it was it was Njai launching himself into Sean Smart. Still Njai pleading his case. Yeah, yeah. Pleading his case. It's good to see both of them up. Thank you for your attention. Please make your card has been issued as we step into foul card. Njai, card issued in 21st minute. Well, typically, technically, you don't have to step off if a yellow card was shown. That's why Sean Smart is trying to stay on the field here. And he's won that case, so Njai will have to step off. After he got the medical attention, but because he was shown the yellow, Smart able to stay on and not step off for a moment. We're going to see Smart able to continue right away. Another different way to build this roster for Vegas. He comes from the college ranks, a national champion last year at Clemson. Decided to forego any MLS contract. Left college after two years, just finished up his sophomore year at Clemson. He trialed with several MLS teams before he went to Clemson. Spent two years there, then decided to turn pro. He's not the only Clemson guy to go the USL route. It was Popmar Boy for Phoenix as well, who had some overtures made by European teams, by MLS teams. And both of 
those guys. Sean Smart, Pop Marboy, who were on that same back line for Clemson last year in the build-up to winning the title. Decided to go the USL route. Speaks volumes about this league and its growth. I agree, and it speaks volumes to the conversations that these organizations are having with players. The draw and the attention that they're bringing to the league and their organizations, their teams, and the homework that has to be done to construct a roster, as we mentioned, from the various levels, the college ranks, the MLS, the academy. A lot of the draw is just, hey, do you want to come here and start every game? Or do you want to go somewhere else where you might get loaned out? You might go to the second team. You might sit the bench for a lot of the time. Just ask Hayden Sargis on the field right now for Vegas. Sargis started in the Sacramento organization through their academy. This one's quickly ahead to Cedeno, but he was offside. Then from there, Sargis ends up with DC United and Loudoun United, and he was on that proverbial bus back and forth from DC to Loudoun year over year. Last year, Sargis only made seven total appearances in the entirety of 2023. Three of those with DC United, four of them with Loudoun. And it was just because he was back and forth. He kind of had one foot in both places. And he's a guy who we've seen have tremendous success in this league when he was with Sacramento or even in 2022 when he spent the whole season with Loudoun. So would you rather be in that scenario or would you rather start 25, 30 games here and go on from there? It's an interesting conversation. A lot of players are starting to realize that this might be the better path. And it's provided a tremendous influx of talent to this league. And it lets people like you and I sit back and enjoy the action. I hope you are enjoying it with us too at home alongside the coach Eric Dobransky. I'm Joe Malfa. Still scoreless between Oakland and Vegas. Nearly 25 minutes into the happenings halfway through this first half. Oakland coming off a 1-0 loss to Phoenix last week. Vegas a 1-0 victory over El Paso. Free kick on the way for the Roots. And you can see both teams just trying to get in a rhythm. I mean, right now, taking advantage of turnovers, but neither side connecting and building through the phases as they would want to. You talked about the possession numbers in favor of Oakland right now, but a lot of that has been through the back and, and swinging it from side to side through that back line. But that's what you get when, when you have two teams that are tactically set up differently, that attack differently, and, and defensively they, they get into a different shape as well you're gonna have to problem solve, and that doesn't happen immediately. It, it takes 25, 30, 35 minutes, it takes a half. You, you gotta problem solve collectively. You've gotta have those conversations. Some of the dead ball restarts. Played through for Benjai. It was a cry for handball from Vegas. Referee pointed to his rib cage. He hit the side of Benjai. This one out for a Vegas throw. era of USL kicks off this April. It's next weekend. Join us Saturday, April 6th on CBS as Louisville City FC takes on Indy 11 at 4 p.m. Eastern time. Lynn Family Stadium in Louisville is the site. Kicking off the first ever national broadcast of the USL on CBS. You talk about a good Western Conference matchup here. That April 6th matchup. That is a good Eastern Conference matchup between two teams talk about being ambitious from Oakland and, and Las Vegas. Loose City had the and They just scored again, by the way. 5-0 <laughs> <That was five laughs> earlier over. today <laughs> against Birmingham. Thrashing, and that was what Louisville needed, just to kind of break out of the little, I don't want to call it a slump because it's so early in the year, but they didn't start the way that we typically see them start, I guess is the way to put it. They were slow out of the blocks. They needed tonight to really kick into a higher gear. And I say they started slow. They won their first three games against El Paso and, and Pittsburgh, but they didn't. it was how they won it. It was yep. squeaking by 1-0 against El Paso. They didn't look great doing it. There were a lot of dangerous moments in the Pittsburgh game as well where they didn't quite look themselves. It was 1-1 one -one until a penalty in the 65th minute gave them the 2-1 lead. They put in another one, 90 plus 6. So 3-1 misleading. Not today. Today, 5-0. It was every bit of 5-0. And Indy will have their hands full next week. Indy lost today, so they'll be going into that one on a sour note. Lost 2-1 to one on the road against Detroit City. 
after taking a 1-0 lead into halftime. And we talk about Loose City and the, uh, that 5-0 explosion today against Birmingham Legion. In the 11, although they lost tonight, I mean, they, they carry two of the more prolific goal scorers in USL Championship history. And you've got Augie Williams up top and you got Seb Sebastian Guinzotti. They're two top 10 goal scorers in this league. Kick from Vegas into a dangerous area. Garcia was lurking. Ngando almost lost it to Cedeno, who would have been off of the races. Cedeno's really come along the first couple games this year. Looks a totally different player than the guy we saw last year. Put on some muscle. Just has more confidence overall. Now it's in giant space. Trayvon Reed running with him. Confidence, remember Clementa to step aside and clear the lines. How many center backs? Younger than he is, less experienced than he is, now in his 11th year in this league. When I just blasted that one into the 30th row, instead of fearing it up the field with poise. And that play from Oakland starts with good patience for, by Matt Soso. Taking a couple extra touches, drawing defenders. Springing that ball wide. Just missing that final play. Final pass. And so so goes down. Free kick on the way. Oakland Roots and Charlie 2024 jerseys are here and they're selling fast. Purchase your 2024 jersey by visiting shop.oaklandrootssc.com. National duty last week with Trinidad and Tobago. They had that playoff against Canada, one of the final qualification spots in Copa America. Canada came through and earned that spot. So no Copa this summer for Neville Hackshaw. Almost given away out of the back from Vegas. They've had a couple of those moments so far where it's looked a little dicey here again. Heart gets a little bit closer up into your throat on moments like that for Rico Rosarena. Asante. Solomon Asante looking for Ricky Alba. Could be joined by his fellow countrymen later. Anderson Azcona was also on international duty with Dominican Republic, except with the U23s who are preparing for the Olympics. He's available for selection here tonight. Ascona, dangerous challenge put in by Emra Clementa. An easy yellow card. That's one we'll have to look at closer again because if VAR were in existence here, uh, my initial reaction saw the studs up there. That seemed worse. Yeah, it's closer look at it. In transition, and, and I understand that Las Vegas is concerned with, yeah, he catches Diaz right there. Stud showing on that yep. right foot. That was a dangerous one. <laughs> he got up and immediately wagged the finger as if nothing happened. But uh, that's a veteran move, trying to sell it the best you can when you know you got your hand caught in the cookie jar. Jai. That's some space. Babu and Jai lets it fly. A Rosarena parries it away. Good decisive moment here by Njai. Seeing this Las Vegas Lights back line retreat into their own 18 yard box. And why not test? A Rosarena from distance. Parries it far enough, puts it out of danger. And 
Oakland starting to start those levels of pressure higher and higher. You mentioned it a few moments ago, some of the, the casual passes through the back and as another foul here from Las Vegas. Garcia who came through strong. Trayvon Reed pleading for a card. He did win the free kick at least. So another opportunity from a wide area to serve a ball in for Oakland. It's usually a duo of Diaz and Cedeno standing over these, but it'll seem like this one is just Cedeno's responsibility. Short from the free kick. Now whipped in toward the back post and Jive's header right at Arena. And he wants to go quickly. Arena blasts it, looking for Coleman Gannon. Sent back over the top by Logue, settled by Ngando. Ngando lost it to Cedeno. Jesse O. Cedeno. Mark Velastrelli, fish out of water here, the center back, but he's still with it. Throw for Cedeno, blocked by Clementa. That is not where you expect to see Gagi, but he almost made it work. And still all after a free kick. And that's what you get when you have all those bodies forward for a set piece. Get a player like Gagi still up there and opportunistic to score. Those moments where Dennis Sanchez feels his team can improve, so those are positive signs right there. The word he used specifically in the Tulsa game was a bit naive, and when they were direct, they didn't sell out enough defensively to make the stops you need to make. Just in that sequence, you see guys sliding, guys blocking shots, blocking crosses. Those are the things that are now starting to come four games into this new era. And that's where you're gonna learn a lot about this team because we mentioned it earlier and Talking to Dennis Sanchez, the timing in which we mentioned it, the, how the roster was constructed, the preseason, a lot of this stuff is gonna be learned in real time. And they're gonna have to make those adjustments. And, and your, to your point, was great, was him mentioning that he felt like they were naive in some of those, those scenarios. And Alba forcing his way through. A little shove from Blanchett to Alba at the end of that. Back line led by Rasmussen thought that Alba committed a couple of fouls on the way through, but seemed like a good, clean, hard-nosed play from a striker. And I know we haven't called Alba's name a lot in the final third on the ball, but he is slowly kind of working his way into this game where he's, he's a handful for this defensive line, and he's made a couple runs where the timing was just a bit off, but you can see what he's trying to do. Being strong in his positioning, pinning players. Now from the corner, Valentin Noel will trigger it. 10 to go in this first half. Knock back down. And it is a corner from the far side now, but Alba's a big target man on these set pieces as well. Scored his goal in the 33 minutes he played off the bench in that loss to Tulsa. It's his first season away from his native Norway. 55 goals. 18 assists in his 180 appearances in his time in Norway before coming to Vegas. And with a nose for goal, and again, two goals and five appearances for Dominican Republic. It's Samake who sends this corner in. Sargis nods it down. A step too slow, Coleman Gannon. Took a little chicken wing to his chest from Blanchett as well. Blanchett's sneaky like that sometimes. Saw the nudge to Ricky Alba. And the build up to that first corner. Got the little sharp elbow out there for Coleman Gannon. Veteran. Very much so. Very much so. Finds oh, yeah. those moments to be, <laughs> to be felt. And uh, makes his presence known. And, and that just adds to the command that he has the boxes. Both these teams have 
really been committed to building through the back. Good ball ahead from Diaz. Trayvon Reed with it. Trying to send a ball across. Reed cuts it back. Still looking for support. Top of the box rolls it for Hackshaw. Not on his preferred foot. We'll give him that benefit of the doubt, but one he'd like to have back. And good recovery run by Hayden Sargis. Looked like they had it beat into space. The ability to recover, slow the ball down, allow his teammates to get in behind. Can't watch the match, turn on Sirius XM FC 157, North America's only 24-7 source for engaging soccer talk, including USL All Access Tuesdays at 7 Eastern. You can hear live matches from the USL, MLS, Premier League, and more, all on Sirius XM FC 157 and the Sirius XM app. Samake. A little quickly here. Gagi. Maybe has a bit more pep in his step this week. His native Georgia qualified for Euros this past week in their playoff. He was capped at the youth levels for Georgia from U17 up through U21. He played in his native Georgia and North Macedonia as well before he came to Oakland this year. The decade he spent in Europe playing at some of the top levels. A lot of qualifying phases for Champions League, UEFA League and Conference League. 231 pro appearances in Europe before coming this way. I had something to celebrate with his native Georgia qualifying for Euros. I mean, we could just put it in park on our couches this summer, by the way. Copa America, Euros overlapping. There's going to be guys who are missing, sure, for some of these teams for different, whether it's friendlies, whether it's those tournaments, of course, but uh, we could enjoy it. <laughs> Time difference as well is wake up in the morning, watch the Euro games, stay up late, watch the Copa America games, and just have a lot of fun. Consume whatever beverages you like in the meantime. Her wives are going to be really happy about <laughs> that. <laughs> us away from watching more football. <laughs> it's going to be interesting to see what adjustments or changes both these teams make, albeit if the scoreline holds at nil-nil. still has been difficult for both these sides to find success and find areas to create those dangerous opportunities in the final third. But you could see both of them picking at different areas, playing different balls, trying to work inside out, outside in. That's so, so missed a little bit of time with an ankle knock. See him go down if you're open, but he walks it off. Five to go in this first half. Reed turns. Reed goes down. Free kick on the way, and Clement is on a yellow. I don't think he's going to pick up another one here, but he just lost his leash for the next one. He definitely did, and. They're going to target him for sure for Oakland in terms of the ability to get isolated one versus one. And they've done that throughout this first half. And it's the secondary challenge here that catches him. And, and to your point, that's going to be a discussion from the referee to Clementa and saying, you're playing with fire, my friend, and, and letting him know. And that's what good refereeing is about. Now it's on Clementa to make the adjustment. Be careful, but for Oakland, you know where to go and... Diaz whips it in, diving header away. Other than that 
set piece they had about midway through the first half for Oakland that they went short. They pulled Las Vegas out a bit. They're gonna want a bit more from the delivery on corners, free kicks. They're doing a lot to earn those plays, so you wanna take advantage and at least put it in an area where you have the traffic. He has one to clean from Samake. All this action, part of the 2024 USL kickoff presented by Terminix throughout the month of March, which is coming up on the end of it real quick. The USL will be kicking off across the country. Join us for all the action on ESPN and CBS Sports platforms. Depending on where in the country you're watching this from, a little over 24 hours remaining in the month of March here as part of this USL kickoff brought to you by Terminix. Some teams have gotten off on the right foot, some the wrong foot. Biggest takeaway we've had from this month of March, though, Eric, is the parity. You look top to bottom, both conferences. I mean, for example, Miami was a big unknown coming into this year. A lot of unknown players going younger with the team, some turnover there, and they've been competitive. Gone are the days of the MLS two sides being doormats that you can count on three points against. You look top to bottom, both conferences, any given day, any given team can pull off whatever you need them to pull off. Uh, Detroit today against Indy. We thought Indy was a top five team in the East. Look out here, Diaz. Rosarena waits for it. <laughs> Made it more interesting than he had to. But Detroit was maybe one of those teams that some people looked at and said, all right, if four teams have to finish below the playoff line, maybe Detroit's one of them this year. New coach, new players. How does it work out for them? They go on the road and beat Indy today. And a lot of people had, if you looked at the preseason power rankings, top five in the league. So there's been some moments like that where it's just shown you once again, parity top to bottom. We're in for a treat all season long here. And it means clubs are gonna have to problem solve. Coaching staffs, players, they're gonna have to collectively problem solve. And I will say that you want to get off to a, a hot start. We talked, you just mentioned Detroit City. Now they're 3-0. They were, they were the lowest scoring team in the USL Championship last year. Now they have six goals in, in three games. And they still made the playoffs last year at yeah. that lowest oh, scoring yeah. team. Ab absolutely. <laughs> and, and, they, and they went on the road and beat number one seed Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh, yep. And that's a team that structurally, defensively, has always been so tough to break down. And you mentioned the parity. Some of those trends and some of those scouting reports are going to start coming out when you, when you get about 10, 11, 12 games in, and you're going to you're going to have to ask and answer different questions at different times against different matchups. So so that's why when you could be at Detroit City and have nine points in your back pocket, and both of these sides like where they're trending as well. Just look at the way the conference shakeup happened. We saw San Diego go bye-bye, RGV went away, new teams coming in in Rhode Island, and North Carolina coming back up from USL League One. They were the champions of that league last year. Rhode Island went out and spent a ton, brought in a great roster. Memphis and Tulsa come this way. Memphis was a playoff team last year. Tulsa was right on the edges. Here's Cedeno going end line, blasting it across. And it's out for a throw, but now, those are two teams who went away in the West. RGV was a non-playoff team, so they're gone. Vegas was a doormat last year. Look at what they've done this year. Now one of the top organizations, maybe, in the Western Conference under the guidance of Jose Bautista. So it's just top to bottom. You don't really know, and that's why you got to tune in and watch us and listen to us talk for 90-plus minutes. Three more in this first half, by the way, the stoppage time now. And that's why you see the broadcast deals that you see in terms of the games being highlighted like the one on, on April 6th on CBS. And so, so trying to find a way through, formerly of Louisville, who will be in that CBS game against Indy. Nagi trying to get fancy, almost lost it. And they get the call their way. Some results to catch you up on, by the way, from earlier in the day. That 5-0 Louisville over Birmingham we already alluded to. Detroit 2-1 over Indy, same deal there. Already talked about that one. Charleston went on the road, beat Miami 2-1. Tampa Bay is strong, showing at home 4-1 to over Rhode Island. And then in the West, San Antonio 2-1 to over Monterey Bay. Three other matches going on right now. Orange County is up 1-0 on Tulsa. Scoreless between Sacramento and Memphis. Scoreless between Phoenix and New Mexico. Talk about that Tampa.
Tampa Bay Rowdies result, but four unanswered goals. Albert Dequa puts Rhode Island up 1-0 in the first half. It's three goals in three games for the reigning Golden Boot winner. Now with his new club and reigning MVP winner, I should say, as well. Speaking of reigning MVPs, we haven't called Solomon Asante's name too much after the early opportunity he had. MVP in 19 and 20, Golden Boot in 19 as well. That historic 22 goal, 17 assist season. Third most goals in a season in league history, most assists in league history. Getting up there, but still has a lot in those legs, the 33 year old quietly last year because Indy flew under the radar for most of the season, but quietly had two goals, eight assists last season, Solomon Asante on a playoff team. Here he is on cue, ahead to Coleman Gannon. Something brewing here, Gannon serves it up toward Noel, takes it off the chest, Alba's there. Ricky Alba to keep the attack alive, Alba goes for goal, pulled it, and it did take a deflection, corner coming here. This will be the last play of the half with 30 seconds to go. Can Vegas drastically change the equation? And there's another veteran move from Paul Blanchett as we talked to talked about earlier. Trying to delay the restart a little bit. Give it his team time to set up, get organized, close out the half defending this corner kick. Samake, the service, last play of the half. Oh, he got caught up in some traffic there, Paul Blanchett. He was lucky that Neville Hackshaw was able to nod it away. Corner now from this side. If nothing comes of this. That will do it for the half. Valentin Noel positions it. MLS Next Pro Cup MVP scored the winning goal, the title winning goal for Austin last year. Noel toward that back post, Blanchett tracking it, has it, and that'll do it for half number one scoreless between Oakland and Vegas. Yeah, I think final actions in the final third are going to be what both these teams look, look at at the half. They're committed in the build through the back, defensive third, through the middle third. It's just missing that final pass and that final decisive moment for, for both these teams, about 25, 30 yards from frame. Good services from Oakland out from that right flank, though. Still have 45 more minutes for either of these teams to come by that goal. It was two shots on target for Oakland in that half, one for Vegas, some positive moments, but not enough from either side to put a dent in the score sheet. Scoreless so far between Oakland and Vegas. Oakland coming off a loss last week. Vegas coming off their first win of the season, hoping to keep that going on a beautiful night here at Pioneer Stadium. More to come. Happy to have you with us this evening on ESPN Plus. Roots, Vegas, more on the way. Oakland Roots Sports Club is back, and it's never been easier to get in the game. Season membership packages and single tickets start at just $25. Join us now at OaklandRootsSE.com. You've earned this, so hold it up high. This isn't a hobby, it's a lifestyle. You find diamonds in the rust to put your own stamp on stock parts, turning metal into murals and detailing every detail. Because it's the things you make that show what you're made of. You are a fighter, and this is your reward. Modelo, the mark of a fighter. Do you like getting cash back on your credit card? A free coffee when you fill your cafe's punch card. A complimentary dessert with your restaurant order then you'll like getting a 5% discount on your electricity with AVA Community Energy's Bright Choice service. Visit avaenergy.org to learn more about AVA's low rates for electricity. Oakland Roots Sports Club is back, and it's never been easier to get in the game. Season membership packages and single tickets start at just $25. Join us now at OaklandRootsSE.com. Scoreless at the break between Oakland and Vegas. 
coming up for Oakland, a match against Monterey Bay coming up for Vegas, a match against San Antonio. Let's take a look back at what both of those teams did last week. Monterey Bay against Rhode Island. Albert Dequap ended up with a brace for Rhode Island, but Monterey Bay was able to answer back on both occasions with a 2-2 draw. Yeah, a game that went back and forth. And for Rhode Island, just continuing to grow and develop in that final third. And when you bring in a player like Albert Dequa, who knows how to find the back of the net, but for Monterey Bay, answered the call, found the equalizer at home, earned the point at home. It was a terrific back and forth game. And these two teams actually met tonight. San Antonio, Monterey Bay met tonight. It was a two to one win for San Antonio. San Antonio coming off a two nil win against Colorado Springs last week. Look, there's few constants in this league. One of them is San Antonio being one of the top teams in the West. Yeah, and a bit of a slow start for Colorado Springs. The, the, dropping that home opener to Detroit City, 2-1, leveled at 1-1 and gave up the late second goal. So a team that really wants to bounce back. Monterey Bay against Oakland next week. San Antonio against Vegas next week. More of Oakland and Vegas is on the way. You've given us a foundation to be proud of. We build on this now. This is it now, gents. This is us from now on. Be honest most of us aren't going to be professional athletes but if your goal is to finish your degree we can help come to a university that puts your goals first Bellevue University your partner in finishing goals Oakland and Vegas still looking for an answer on the score sheet. And we've had some answers to some questions to begin this season around the league. Let's catch you up on some news and notes. Hard to believe that we're about to turn the calendar from March to April already. And when we do, next weekend, April 6th, CBS, we've got the rivalry between Louisville City and Indy 11. That should be a fun one. And also welcoming some new teams as well. Buffalo on its way in the next couple of years as the expansion continues. Yeah, USL on CBS. We talked about the growth of this, the continued growth of this league. And then now adding Buffalo, we know what kind of fan base they have amongst all sports in terms Hide of Hide your tables. <laughs> yes. Hide your tables when Buffalo <laughs> joins USL. And Alan Gavilanes has been scoring for Miami to begin the season. Kind of braced in that 2-2 draw against Orange County last week. They were player of the week. No surprise to see Albert Dequa on there as well. He had a brace of his own. But so much of the talent that this league has to offer. And the thing that strikes me here, Eric, is a lot of the new logos that weren't associated with these players maybe last year, like a see yep. do now in Hartford, Malloy, now in Charleston. There was a lot of movement and a lot of top-end player movement this year. Yep, and, and you talked about the parity amongst the league. You, you see three Charleston Battery uh, players from a team that was in the USL final last year. So continue. They're unbeaten right now. Two wins, two draws. They got a 2-1 victory tonight at Miami FC. This is a look ahead at the schedule coming up next week. Again, 1 p.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. Eastern, CBS, Louisville, Indy, the big one next week. But another one that catches the eye out west is Tulsa and Phoenix. Both of those teams have shown signs of positivity early on. Just waiting for one of them to take that next step. And what stands out to me as well is Tampa Bay and Pittsburgh. And you mentioned it with San Antonio, them being a mainstay in the Western Conference. Pittsburgh Riverhounds is a consistent mainstay among the top in the Eastern Conference. They're towards the bottom, three straight losses. So 
They're, they're going to play a hot Tampa Bay Rowdies team, and they're going to want a result. Uh, Tampa Bay team coming off that 4-1 win against Rhode Island. As we look at the out-of-town scores brought to you by Visit Oakland. Get out on the town and visit Oakland to explore arts, culture, and world-class cuisine. I mean, those two in the middle right there, 5-0, 4-1, the most eye-catching ones, Louisville and Tampa Bay leading the charge in the Eastern Conference. And San Antonio, 2-1 over Monterey Bay. They continue year after year, Eric, to just be at the top of the West, the flag bearers of this conference. Yeah, just so dangerous in both boxes. They're just so good defensively, so dynamic in the attack. And then you look at the left upper corner, North Carolina getting the result on Hartford. Hartford's first loss of the season. We've talked about the change within each conference and, and what to expect from each team. Hartford had two wins to start. Absolutely. We'll see what is to come still, what to expect out of Oakland and Vegas. Should we expect a goal? There are some moments in the first half that would say yes. We'll see if the team can go and get it. The second half is on the way. Go get it, Doug. When termites show up, so do we. Terminix it. Looks great. Oh. When termites show up, so do we. Terminix it. How can someone so cute be so complicated? Someone so grown up still have so much growing left to do. We know kids aren't many adults. They're still developing bodies and minds need specialized care, including physicians and care teams who focus on treating kids and only. You've earned this, so hold it up high. This isn't a hobby, it's a lifestyle. You find diamonds in the rust to put your own stamp on stock parts, turning metal into murals and detailing every detail because it's the things you make that show what you're made of. You are a fighter, and this is your reward. Modelo, the mark of a fighter. Tonight's match is presented in part by Anthem Blue Cross and Modelo. Take a look at highlights from the first half. It was Babu and Jaya leading the charge in many ways for Oakland. It was, and this was a good drive. Seeing Las Vegas Lights defenders retreating to their own 18, why not tee it up on the left foot and forcing Rosarina into a save. And this short set piece proved to be one of the more dangerous opportunities. And again, Jaya getting on the end of it. That, Whenever you play short there, you're trying to draw everybody out, creating a little bit more space, working off the blind shoulder of the defenders. And Oakland continued to find success out wide. It was just missing that final pass, that final service that could open up the scoring tonight. But overall, both teams have stayed committed to building through the back, through the third. And both these coaches were very clear about the final third was coming and it was gonna be, take some time to build it together and then surprisingly large number of the ball in this one. And the first portion of the first half was very transitional for Las Vegas. They won the ball and then they looked to go direct right away. They've since found a, a bit more calm in terms of that first pass. It's not as direct and it's not as progressive. It's helping them keep possession. It's helping them rotate the ball. They're getting good shape. They're finding some more opportunities. We talked about Ricky Alba starting to grow into that half. That's gonna be something that Dennis Sanchez and his side are gonna to wanna to continue in the second half. The balance between being patient and finding their moments to be urgent. And he was very specific when he addressed us this week, Dennis Sanchez, where he spoke about just the possession. Oakland, if you look at the metrics through the first three matches, average 40% per game. Vegas through the first three games, average 60% per game. So he said, if that's what the figure looks like, we'll be playing our game. Things will be going right for us. It's not that figure, it's 50-50. So it's definitely not what Dennis Sanchez himself expected. And he went further into that as far as why he wanted to hit those numbers. The reason was 
He felt that this Oakland team has Camden Riley, who's unavailable tonight with the injury, starts signing some autographs over there on that far side. But he, he said this Oakland team is super organized, in the words of Dennis Sanchez, and the only way to pull them out is by having possession. You start making the ball sweat, passing left, passing right, holding the ball, Oakland is going to expand, and those alleyways through will be there. Not only has Oakland remained defend, uh, rather structured in their approach, but they haven't been pulled away because Vegas hasn't had the possession. Yeah, and it's that possession with a purpose mentality. It's you're doing it to move defenders. You're doing it to, as you mentioned, access different space higher up the field and create those moments. Camden Riley endearing himself to the fans here in Oakland. Not available tonight again due to injury. It was one of the offseason acquisitions for the Roots coming over from San Diego Loyal. No subs at the half for either side. We'll see when Ricky Alba maybe gets his fellow countryman Edison Ascona out there. He had the assist on Alba's goal that he scored in his debut, playing 33 minutes off the bench that day. I want to see how Oakland attacks Clementa. Playing on a yellow. And playing with no leash because he yep. had that foul right before halftime. We were told there would be no change, and now scrambling to come on is Mishneider Sheri for Oakland. So it will indeed be one change out of the gates. And it's Justin Rasmussen who comes off. Probably forces Navelle Hackshaw to that back line for the Roots. Vegas left to right in the white, Oakland right to left in the black, and away we go in half number two. With the coach Eric Dobransky, I'm Joe Malfa. Happy to have you with us this evening from Hayward, California at Pioneer Stadium. That's where that flexibility comes into play for Oakland. Navelle Hackshaw could be terrific as a six. Could be terrific on the back line. He's played both positions for club and for country. So now he slots back. Nainer Shari goes up top. A lot of moving pieces. Guys comfortable in different positions as the game dictates. Now they have their target man up there again. He had to score for Oakland. He had a secondary assist a couple of matches ago. And that 1-1 draw to Charleston. Look here from Coleman, took a deflection. Oh, that's unlucky for Oakland. And the start to the half that Vegas wanted. Coleman Gannon ignites the attack for Vegas. You don't ask how they happen, just do they happen or not. And it happened for Vegas. And goals change games, and I know it sounds obvious, but you have to create a mentality of being opportunistic, and that's what Las Vegas has come out and done here in this second half, starting out playing positive, playing the front foot, and you can see the commitment, and then this ball by Gannon takes the deflection, beating Paul Blanchett to his left, but you miss 100% of the shots that you don't take, and Gannon was decisive with what he wanted to do, and what a start for Las Vegas. Assuming he gets credit for it, which he should. It was going on target. I can't assume that Paul Blanchett would have made the stop. But assuming he does get credit and it doesn't officially get changed to an own goal. That's the first goal with Vegas for Coleman Gannon. Not his first in USL Championship, though. The 21-year-old broke onto the scene in 2020 on an academy deal with Atlanta. Look out, giving away Trayvon Reed. A Rosarena backtracking and made the stop, cleaning up the mess he created. And unfortunately, this sequence is a bit of an extension of some of the, the moments that were in the first half. Play out of the back, just a bit casual, a bit late, too long, too many touches. And not just from a Rosarena, just in that moment as well, but like in the first half, it came from a number of players throughout the back and through the midfield. But that's gonna be something where Dennis Sanchez, they're gonna wanna tighten up quite a bit. The ensuing corner, Memo Diaz. The second effort here. Lays it off instead to Trayvon Reed. Slipped through toward Njai, was caught wrong footed. And that whole thing was created not only by the lackadaisical play by Rosarena, but the fresh legs of Sheree. He was the one charging up top. Had the deflection. No 
know Delgado has spoken highly of Sherry. The goal hasn't come yet. It's his first professional season of soccer coming from Violette in Haiti, where he burst out on the scene with four goals in CONCACAF Champions League last year as they upset Austin. He had a brace against Austin and then a brace against the eventual champions, Club Leon. Reed forcing his way through. Still with it, working on Sean Smart. Reed into the corner. And it's out for a corner. So Cherie is really just taken to the coaching and everything they're asking of him, including that type of hard work. They've looked at the metrics from the trackers the players wear, and his are always among the top in terms of output. See El Cedeno and Swinger. A Rosarena awkwardly came out for it, did enough to slap it away. Gando wins it from Logue. And you talk about building blocks for Las Vegas and learning from moments. You just had a massive swing of momentum with the goal by Gannon. And you have a casual moment building out of the back that now leads to Oakland playing with a bit of confidence. Maybe another one for Samake. He blasts it home. Gelser Samake gives Vegas a 2-0 lead. After a tight scoreless first half, it's Vegas up two, just five minutes into the second. What an emphatic finish by Samake. Here I am talking about momentum swinging, <laughs> and he just pins his defender, puts it on that left foot, and just roofs this shot past Paul Blanchett. What a start to the second half for Las Vegas. This feels like, this is gonna be a really deep cut here, Eric. You ready for it? This feels like in Jurassic Park when the Raptor figures out how to open the door. That's what this Vegas team feels like right now. They've had the pieces in place here in this new era, this new chapter, all the players they brought in start out with two losses out of the gates. They looked like they had some chemistry issues and they weren't quite gelled yet. They come out, an impressive shutout winning against El Paso last week. On the road again, now up 2-0. We've talked about the talent and depth of talent for this team. Guys who have played at very high levels, have had a lot of success in various leagues. Now they're up 2-0 on the road and they could make it two wins in a row. Still a long way to go in this game but it just feels like they're figuring things out as they go along. And 21 shots against Tulsa in that 3-1 loss, and, and we talk about learning experiences. You have 21 shots and you still lose 3-1, you outshoot your opponent, but it is about efficiency. It is about shots on target, being really quality in, in the shots that you're taking and upgrading the shots you're taking. And that's what you've seen with the two chances. We talk about the little deflection that the shot took from Gannon. But that take by Samake, that was a decisive turn, a decisive pin met by an even better finish. So officially, Coleman Gannon on the first goal from Solomon Asante. And Yasu Samake on the second goal from Valentin Noel. What a start to the second half for Vegas. They want to be the protagonist. They want to control the ball, control the space. They're not going to change how they play, home or road. You're seeing it take hold now. And Jai trying to drag Oakland back into this. And for Las Vegas, and, and this is going to sound a little simple, but I think how you navigate the next five, 10 minutes is going to be important for Las Vegas. Reed. Has support. Reed looking for Njai. Went for the acrobatic finish and missed out. Could he have just gone with his head instead? I'll have to take a second look. Because we saw it after the Gannon goal, and now we see it after the Samake goal. Oakland's really ramping up the pressure. Yeah, it looks like he could have just made the decision to go with his head there. Instead, trying to get his left foot up there. I think appealing for a corner there at the end, but to no avail. I don't know whether he just felt like the timing was off in terms of the commitment to get to that. But for 
Las Vegas, not saying if you get to the 60th minute, you've won this match, but you, you definitely- Feel better about yourself. Yep, you feel good, you navigate that time. You put more pressure on Oakland to score two goals in 30 minutes. Saw it with the forced turnover from Cherie after the first goal from Rosarena. And then now that chance by Jai. It's an Oakland side that can be explosive in the attacking third. And if you are looking for a great way to enjoy a night out with friends, family, or coworkers, Check out the discounted group ticketing options for your next birthday or party. To secure your tickets, visit oaklandrootssc.com slash tickets or call 510-488-1144. Gomez. That's Soso. Give it away. It's Alba. They have confidence right now, Vegas, and they go again. Coleman Gannon drops it back for Ngando. JC and Gondo looking through for Alba. Intercepted by Hackshaw. Gives it right back though for Sean Smart. Solomon Asante, by the way, getting credit with the assist on the Coleman Gannon goal. It's number 54. Second all time, trying to track down Canardo Forbes. He's number one. 11 behind him. He heard you talking about his involvement in the first half. <laughs> right. <laughs> Over the top from Sargis, a dangerous one in the end for Blanchett. Just checks how close he was to that goal line. But that's what veteran players do, like Solomon Asante. They find a way. They could go from having a quiet first half, soak in the information at halftime, really evaluate what this game is asking of them, and make the adjustments and execute. And that's what Dennis Sanchez and his side have done. They've come in from halftime, been dynamic, been decisive, they've been explosive on and off the ball. Here's Ngando, Coleman Gannon, Solomon Asante. Asante, quick touch to the end line. Carves it toward that back post and cleared away. We don't really talk much about Samake again as far as the wide net that this Vegas team cast. He was another one who was in that sort of DC United, Louder United loop with his teammate now in Hayden Sargis, who's getting set to throw this ball back in. Or last year, Samake actually went ahead and he made five starts for DC United in MLS. He made two starts in League's Cup. So seven first team starts last year for DC United for Gasu Samake. And now he just sort of falls into Vegas' lap with a player like Hayden Sarges. This is a loaded bunch of talent for Vegas. If you were to go pound for pound, player for player, they stack up with maybe, maybe one or two teams who have more talent on paper than this Vegas team in the Western Conference. The question is just the experiment of throwing them all together with 100% turnover of your roster, that's all. But it's all there. Yeah, it's turning those individual skill sets and, and as you mentioned, on paper, into a collective group that does it on and off the ball. How do you defend? How do you attack? Having that clear identity. And it definitely seems now, with this fourth game, that... Zerenio goes for a goal, but it's blocked. They're executing at a high level. They're understanding. Driven in again towards Cherie. Crashes into a Rosarena what Dennis Sanchez and his staff are asking to them. You see Rosarena staying down. A little bit of a knock at the end there. And the longer this game stays 2-0, the more frustrating Las Vegas is gonna make Oakland. And this injury timeout brought to you by Anthem Blue Cross. Anthem is transforming healthcare by improving the health of our local communities. Rosarena is an adventurous man when it comes to his play and goal. But like so many players who play that way, they'll make a ridiculous stop that makes you forget all about it. Case in point, 
after they went up 1-0. The giveaway he had in that little adventure he took makes you shake your head. Then the save he makes on Trayvon Reed makes you say, no, all right, that's fine, just keep doing that. A player who hasn't had a ton of experience in this league, only five appearances in his time with Tampa Bay. Spent more time in USL League One, 16 stars for Ford Madison in 2022. But as he starts to put the pieces together in goal as well, just has a shot-stopping ability that you can't teach. Aiden Sarge is stepping through unmarked. Sabake earns a corner. Hitscar Cruz is getting ready to come on for Oakland. Just graduated from the academy of the first team this year, signed his pro deal. Scored a couple of goals in preseason, yet to get on that score sheet in the regular season for this first team. Napo Matsoso is coming off. I just remember now he still had the pity on Hitscar Cruz. he would have gotten before somebody called him back. Referee wasn't ready for the restart yet. As we tick toward the hour mark, Vegas 2, Oakland 0. Coleman Gannon, Gausu Samake, the goal scorers for Vegas. 46th and 50th minutes respectively. And they come on the road and take three more. Building off their win last week against El Paso. And they find another insurance goal here. Clementa almost settled. Popped back in the air. Garcia was lighting it up. Clementa keeps it alive. Hour gone, half hour remains. Sean Smart. Surveys, lofts it. Gagi gets ahead to it. Edison Escona now getting ready to come on for Las Vegas on loan from Inter Miami. And slip through, Samake, Alba, oh, that's one that'll keep him up at night. Open goal, brilliant buildup. Coleman Gannon comes over to offer a reassuring hand, but it should be 3 0 Vegas. What an entry pass here by Ngando. And then the awareness to play this ball right across to Ricky Alba. Absolutely wants that one back. He knows he needs to do better with that finish. That puts this game not out of reach, but it, it, it makes it almost a mountain to climb with. You could say out of reach. 3-0 yeah. with a half hour to go is probably out of reach. <laughs> I didn't want to put so much weight on missing that goal. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, it would close the door on this match. <laughs> Unless all of a sudden you're pulling 2019 Liverpool against Barcelona out of a hat with four goals in the last half hour. It's probably out of reach, but Ricky Alba at least keeps it a two-goal lead for now with his miss. But he's joined finally by Edison Escona, who was also away last week with Dominican Republic, just not with the senior team like Alba. He was with the U23s. Escona was the captain and leader of that Dominican Republic team at the U-20 level in the summer of 2022. They made the surprise run to the U-20 championship where they failed to the U.S., but just by getting to the final, they qualified for the Olympics this year. Escona, barring injury, is presumed to be the captain of that team this summer in the Olympics. And now here for Vegas on loan from Inter Miami. Became the first player in Inter Miami's young club history to debut for the first team after coming up to the academy when he debuted in MLS in 2021. Tremendously talented player. We've seen him under the USL umbrella before. He was a finalist for Young Player of the Year in League One back in 2020 with Fort Lauderdale. And then in 2022, played a few games on loan to El Paso. Spent most of last year in MLS Next Pro or on the first team's bench. He's going to commit the foul here and picks up a quick yellow. Welcome to the match. goes back to the roster construction for Las Vegas. I mean, the conversations that you have to have, the the information that you have to have on each of these players, and the clear identity that you built towards with the addition of these players. It's an exciting time for, for Dennis Sanchez, Jose Bautista. I mean, this organization
can go back to that word that Dennis Sanchez used, the collaboration that it took to, to put this roster together. And that's a lot of credit to, to each individual that had a hand in doing that because you've got experience from different levels. And Jai's long throw ends up loose still at the top of the six. Finally cleared. Cedeno puts it back in. Rosarena has it. You got players on loan. And players are, are fully aware when they're having these conversations of joining organizations or playing for certain coaches and playing with different players. They, they know the style of play and they know where they fit and they know roles and they know what that role could equal output wise as well. And that's where you have honest conversations where this is the role, this is the style of play, this is what you can expect. For Ascona, it is a season long loan from Inter Miami. The option to purchase does kick in on July 1st. So it's a loan through the end of the year. As of the beginning of July, they have the option to purchase is how it was reported, the nature of the deal. And the assist on the Ricky Alba goal a couple of matches ago in that loss to Tulsa. I mentioned he's going to be the captain, barring injury, of the Olympic team this summer. That's not to say he hasn't debuted for the first team, for the senior team, excuse me. He has seven caps already and two assists for Dominican Republic senior teams, played in CONCACAF Nations League. Player as young as he is at 20 years old. A lot of experience and high-end experience under his belt. Just hasn't really had a chance. Sort of had his wings clipped, so to speak, from Phil Neville and that former Inter-Miami regime. Just didn't really see it in him. Didn't fit their style of play, despite his talent. He was always a guy who excelled in USL League One or excelled in MLS Next Pro, but just didn't have a chance to sniff the first team because of their style of play. Now it's over the top, and it's in space for Vegas. Cutting, looking at goal, and finding goal to maybe put this game away. Valentin Noel, one of their prize acquisitions from the offseason. It's all Vegas tonight in Oakland. And this has been the story that Las Vegas has been writing throughout this first, uh, this second half, sorry, is the play being so front-footed. This starts with patience swinging the ball from side to side in the back, and then the recognition that that ball over the top is there for Valentin Noel. The runs, the commitment from the, runs away from the ball, open up the lane for Valentin Noel to put it on his right foot and put a third in the back of the net. Rookie Alba, consider yourself off the hook. Valentin yeah, Noel yeah. bails you out. 24-year-old from France, terrific collegiate player at Pitt. Was the number 20 overall pick in last year's MLS draft by Austin. Not alone from Austin, he was transferred to Vegas in the offseason. And as Sanchez was the assistant coach there at Austin, brought him over with him. Got his guy, paying dividends early. That is his second goal of the season already. Valentin Noel, he had their first goal of the year for Vegas, and now he has another. Lindo Mafeka is getting set to make his first appearance of the season for Oakland. Might be too little too late though tonight. Yeah, wanting some sort of spark off the bench. Noah Delgado is gonna See if the new Mufeka can flip the script a bit here for Oakland. Really complete performance here in the second half. Three goals, three different goal scorers. And it'll be Mufeka for Trayvon Reed.
should these three points remain in the bag for Vegas, we'll make up some ground. When we showed you the standings at the beginning of the night, they were all the way down in 10th place. And again, it's still early to be looking at it. But the one thing I will say that we've learned from coaches over the years, Eric, talking to different coaches in this league, they have checkpoints. And those checkpoints are usually the months. So when the calendar turns after tomorrow, as Mafeka comes on now for Reed, and at the beginning of April, you look and just take a glance at that table. Vegas is going to be in fourth place in the Western Conference instead of in 10th place, where they would have been when the night began. So again, it's super early, but we've heard it from a number of coaches in this league. Until you get to about August, maybe July or August, you're not checking often. You're checking when you have a checkpoint. Maybe you're going into a bye week and you take a glance at where you are. Maybe the month changes on the calendar. You take a glance at where you are. Vegas is going to be in fourth place at the end of March. And you talk about some of the coach speak that you get with checkpoints and, and looking ahead in terms of going game by game, but getting the big picture as well. And if this, they pick up three points tonight, they have San Antonio at home next. And it's a chance to make a statement. And big exactly. chance to make a statement. And I think a game like this definitely opens some eyes because you go one nil against El Paso, that's a complete performance. You score the goal that, that gets you the three points, you get the clean sheet. But you go to Oakland, well coached, good players, good identity. You're up 3 0 right now. That's, I think, the most impressive aspect of this. And granted, the first goal, some help from the deflection, yes. But they've controlled the entirety of the second half, Vegas. And through Oakland's first three games, despite the injuries, despite the flu that hit the team in week two, and despite the international duty that ravaged them last week, they have been organized and stout defensively, only giving up one goal in each game. And they played some top attacking teams, mind you. They played Indy with all their terrific talent up top in Gonzalez and Williams. They played Charleston, who put four in the next game after Oakland. They played Phoenix, who have loads of talent. One goal, one goal, one goal. Tonight alone, Vegas has as many goals as those three teams had in three games combined. And that's a great point, Joe, because two of your three games have been against the two teams that were in the final last right. year. Right. Charleston and Phoenix. That's and why that this is such an eye-opener for Vegas. Oh, yeah. I'm told that Valentin Noel, somewhere in that last scrap, picked up a yellow card. He didn't notice it, or why. We'll pass along that answer if it comes our way. But all you need to know for now is he's got a yellow and has to be careful. Emmer Clemente has one as well. Edison Ascona, the third with the yellow right now on the Vegas side. Abu Karanjai, the only player with a yellow on the Oakland side. And Eric, if you go player for player, Vegas, San Antonio, talent's there. The, the only thing that would maybe prevent somebody in their mind from saying Vegas can beat San Antonio is the recent history of Vegas in the last couple of years. But again, from top to bottom, that has been the messaging. This is not that former iteration of Vegas from what they were as LAFC's affiliate team for a couple of years there or to last year where they still were a chicken with his head cut off, so to speak, in many ways where it was just a disjointed mess at times. Top to bottom, new ownership, sporting director, front office, coaching staff, a 100% roster turnover. They are Vegas of years past in name and badge only. Nothing else associated with the past. And they have the talent to go ahead and pull it off next week. Don't be surprised if you're sitting at home and still thinking this is maybe Vegas of past years when you see them maybe take down San Antonio next week, especially with the showing they put forth tonight. Yeah, and we all know that sometimes the hardest thing to do in sport when you're rebuilding, restructuring, trying to change the brand and trying to change the how the outside views the, your team is turning the corner and winning games and, and getting results. And to your point, when you have the construction of a, a new roster from top to bottom, really, ownership, organizationally, players, the benefit is they don't know. All right. They, they don't know anything other than what they have right in front of them. So they don't have the pass to really draw. And obviously, you have some returning players here and there. But 
you're not trying to convince a team that they belong. And San Antonio, they've just continued to be at the top of the Western Conference. But we talk about the ambition from both these sides, but right now from Las Vegas, they're gonna want to continue this statement tonight into that matchup against San Antonio. Really put all the pieces together, but it's where the messaging is always so important and you can see it from both these teams. They're so clear on what their identity is, what their non-negotiables are. And the Oakland Roots are right back home next week on April 6th. Try and rebound from this one against Monterey Bay FC for Super Hi-Fi Night. Limited single game tickets are still available. Purchase yours now before they sell out. To secure your tickets, visit oaklandrootssc.com slash tickets or call 510-488-1144. Quarter of an hour remains. Vegas, a commanding 3-0 lead. Happy to have had you with us this evening with the coach, Eric Dabransky. I am Joe Malfa. Whipped in from out wide. Oakland still searching for answers in that attacking third. They didn't have a shot on target last week. Obviously, with that, they didn't score last week in the 1-0 loss against Phoenix. They have four shots on target tonight. That's the same number as Vegas, but they just haven't had the same danger, the same creativity. Yeah, anyway, Gennaro Nigro getting set to check on now for Las Vegas. Another one you talk about, the path to Vegas. Born in Jersey, Roma Academy. Goes to Italy for a couple of years, plays in the third division with Potenza. Comes here, MLS Next Pro with Salt Lake. But now he's here with Vegas. Just the paths that some of these players have charted to get to this Vegas team. And the way these coaches and staff have found players, remarkable. Now gonna be in some duress. Still with a three goal cushion, but Sean Smart Picks up a yellow and sets up Oakland with a free kick. And Oakland's gonna want to push to find positives here in the second half and in this match. Whether it's getting a goal on a set piece from this range, been dangerous in some of the wide areas in the run of play. It'll be Nigro for Samake, who scored the second goal in this match. I mean, that's the most important one in this match as well. It was one thing for Vegas to take the lead on that deflection in the 46th minute. It was another thing to consolidate it with a second goal four minutes later and really take full control of this game. As it stands, it would be Coleman Gannon who has the winning goal. But again, you could argue Samake's was the most important. Diaz cleared. And Las Vegas would be the first ones to tell you that you could build off momentum in losses because that game at Tulsa was 3-0. And we talked about the Ricky Alba goal that made it 3-1. But they parlayed that goal into, now it was a 1-0 win against El Paso. Now they have three tonight. So for Oakland, can you build upon and, and really start stacking some of these plays in the final third while cleaning up some of the moments that led to the three goals for Las Vegas? Haven't scored since the 49th minute of the match against Charleston, this Oakland team. That 1-1 draw that night. Ilya Alexeev, the academy kid who was up for the night because of all the illnesses that took hold throughout the team. Earned 1-1 one, one draw. And again, sample size still small. It's only going to be four games, even though we're a month into the season. But what do you make of Oakland if you're there internally, knowing Delgado and your staff? You beat Indy to start the year, who are supposed to be one of the top teams in the East. You played the last two finalists, draw against Charleston, loss against Phoenix in a close one, 1-0, one with half a deck that you're playing with in both of those games. But now you have this thrashing at home. So it's a mixed bag of results. One really positive one, one 
sort of neutral one, but more slant positive for Charleston. A sort of neutral one, but slant negative for Phoenix. Very negative one here, a fully mixed bag. What do you make of it? What do you do in the self-scout? What do you do next if you're Oakland as you turn the calendar into April? All questions that we'll have answered starting next week when they take on Monterey Bay. And again, next week, don't forget, 1 p.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. Eastern on CBS. It's Louisville against Indy. That is CBS as in regular CBS, not CBS Sports Network, where you can find other games throughout the year, of course. But this one on the main channel. Malik Howell will also check in now for Las Vegas. Samake off and Smart off. And for Oakland, three of their next five on the road. They're at El Paso, they're at Detroit City, and they're at San Antonio. Not in that order, but as you mentioned, hosting Monterey Bay, who lost 2-1 to San Antonio tonight. And you always, talking to coaches, they take it game by game, but with the roster rotation and the, and the management that they have, and whether it's international games, whether it's injuries, whether just overall load management, you do, do have to kind of keep one eye on the progressive schedule a bit. I know Noah Delgado and his coaching staff are gonna wanna build on some of the positives that they have tonight and really correct some of the issues that have plagued them here in this 45. The, the first 45 lacked a bit of rhythm from both teams. And then the second 45, it's been Las Vegas that's been on the front foot. It's really caught Oakland in Difficult situations defensively as we see the sub. Jai coming off. Alex Steve takes his spot. We'll have Memo Diaz likely come to the left side now as he's already posted up. Alex Steve go to the right side. And maybe that's a decision colored by the score because you would think it'd be Brian Tamakas, captain of El Salvador, captain of this team. Top player, arguably, most important player, arguably, for this Oakland team. Available on the bench tonight, that would normally be his sub right there since he wasn't in the starting 11, but you give it to the academy kid who proved his worth with the goal against Charleston. Here down three with 10 minutes to go, and here he is now. And to have three goals without Ricky Alba being involved, granted he should have had one on that wide open goal, but to have three goals without him involved, that's another positive sign for this Vegas team that it's come from a variety of different sources. And we talked about the midfield of this team, how strong that midfield is. Coleman Gannon in the midfield gets a goal. Gansu Samake on the left wing gets a goal. Valentin Noel in the middle of that midfield gets a goal. Those are the three goal scorers tonight. Sedeno's corner. Cherie crashes into a Rosarena. Clean challenge was deemed initially a late whistle there. It's goals from a variety of sources for Vegas. Not to start contrast to an Oakland side that's not really finding much offense from anywhere right now. And the icing on the cake is going to be if they can finish this game with a clean sheet. They're going to want consecutive shutouts. And that'll speak loudly to the collective mindset of this side, regardless of whether your role is, whatever your role is, offensively, defensively, collectively pulling in the same direction. You're up 3-0. Let's go ahead and finish this last seven minutes. Keep a zero on the other side of the scoreboard. As we see a Rosarenas back up. Really fearless in the way he attacks services and set pieces. Select is the official match ball supplier of the USL Championship and many elite leagues throughout Europe. Visit us.select-sport.com for the latest product specials and more. Select the player's choice.
Gomez switches out wide for Alex Eve. Edgar Cruz was calling for it. Cedeno with it. Hackshaw lofts it. Rosarena snatches it. And eFootball 2024 is here. Live your dream, rep your team, and play as your favorite USL Championship club. eFootball free to play. Download now. question for Oakland becomes, how long do you wait as far as looking outside the organization? Again, just conversations that you start to maybe think about now that we're a month into it and the goal scoring has been difficult to come by because it was the same thing last year. Johnny Rodriguez led the way with a dozen, but they didn't really have much support goal scoring wise elsewhere. It's a far cry from two years ago when Otar Magnus Carlson scored 19 for the group and they had that guy they could hang their hat on and score at will at times. But when you look beyond Rodriguez, of course, Cherie is somebody you hope that is just a raw block of talent that eventually starts kicking in. But until then, where is the goal scoring support coming from? And when you had the same issues last year, and aside from Cherie, you didn't really address it. Granted, Mafeka hasn't been healthy yet out there tonight, of course, in his first appearance as a sub without Rodriguez. So one comes back, one goes away. Memo Diaz puts in a sliding effort. So to be fair, they haven't had everybody together all at once, this Oakland team. But we're going on a year and a half now where the question has been goal scoring. There's never been a question about their midfield or their back line or their goalkeeper. Again, second team all league last year in Paul Blanchett. The question has been the goal scoring. And you just wonder how long the wait is before the trigger gets pulled to maybe look outside the organization. And it's one of the hardest questions to answer. Uh, you think that you can provide a, a structure or a style of play that can define you in the final third, but you also want players to feel free to be creative, to find those moments of isolation in 1v1 and be dangerous. So it's about trying to find a balance that highlights your attacking players throughout. And you mentioned the goal scoring from Las Vegas three goals, three different goal scores. That's the balance. And for Oakland, Noah Delgado and his side, only they're gonna know how they, what they look like in practice and how fluid it looks. And he had mentioned it when we spoke to him this week. That final third is, is one of the last pieces that comes for teams because it's where you lack the most space. It's where you lack time, the decisiveness, the awareness, the cohesiveness between teammates. All those key elements play a factor. But as you mentioned, this is, this is something that they dealt with last season as well. Corey Bennett takes the spot of Ricky Alba. Everybody, all organizations and teams and coaches are on the lookout for that that one player, that one goal scorer. Can Cherie be that player that adds to how dangerous this Oakland side hopes to be? Looking through from Afeka. Wants to turn and hit on that left foot. Took a deflection. Rosarena has it. They were eighth in goal scoring last year out of 12 in the Western Conference. So, toward the bottom, they were on the outside of the playoffs looking in by four points when all was said and done. Made the playoffs their first two years in this league. Became a little bit more difficult last year. Dealt with so many injuries, Oakland. I don't mean to suggest that this is a team in dire need right now, but we're sitting here filling time in a 3-0 game. There's yeah. things we got to talk about. But as far as that being the big question, because we've seen the back line, back line strong, midfield strong. They made the playoffs two years in a row before missing last year. So you know it's there for Oakland. It's just very easy to point to what the missing piece of the puzzle is. And it's just a question of, do they have it within? Do they have to go find it somewhere else? That's really the thing right now for Oakland. Otherwise, if they can drop in a Ricky Alba, we're talking about them in the same way we're probably talking about Vegas right now. Yeah, and 
your last result is the result that drives the narrative moving forward a bit. And, and it's, yes, you conceded three goals, but as you mentioned, other than that goal in the 49th minute against Charleston, it's dried up a bit in the final third. And you haven't seen a really clear cut opportunity. I mean, take that back. Njai had two really yes, good chances. Yes. He had the good, he had solid chance from outside the 18. He had the header on the set piece. And he did get in here in the second half on that far post. But you have to have those conversations because you, you, you're gonna look back later in the season and if you didn't have those discussions and I know it's early but how are you going to address goal scoring and, and, and problem solve from there because you don't want be want to be at the midway of the season and not to have tried to at least fix what you can whether that's even in training just providing the players a bit bit more of what the what they want the structure to look like or what they or the freedom that they want and if you think about where Oakland's goals have come from this year opening match the game winning goal was Brian Tamakas your right wing back the leveling goal against Charleston was your right wing back filling in for Tamakas and Alexeev your best chances tonight have come from your left wing back and Babu and Jai that's how they want to play they want yep. those guys to get into the attacking third and create chances, but how much can you rely on your outside backs to provide your scoring? It's told to be four minutes of stoppage time. And there's the confirmation from the fourth official. Vegas cruising to a big victory here tonight. And that is gonna be the main takeaway, the main story from this one. This is not Las Vegas lights of the last half decade. This is a new era. And this is a team that very well may go on and do it at home next week against San Antonio. If they can pull that off, that is going to be alarm bells to the rest of the league. Vegas is not coming anymore. Vegas is here. And look, even if they go out next week and fall to San Antonio, but it's a good performance, that is going to be a message sent to the rest of the league to start the year with two losses, to beat El Paso, playoff team from last year and hopeful again for this year, to beat Oakland this in this manner on the road. Very big result. This Vegas team is loaded with talent. The question was chemistry and coming together. They're starting to gel and figure it all out. And we can always talk about the process in which your team grows and builds those principles. And, and we could always talk about the process and learning from losses. But this is a results-driven sport and a results-driven business where when you're winning, you're breeding that confidence and, and you're breeding that belief and, and right now, Las Vegas has strung together, is about to put their second straight win together, and if they don't concede in the next three minutes, two clean sheets, four goals, zero against so far. We talk about a, a way to build confidence. But Dennis Sanchez, and going back to the process, Dennis Sanchez, had felt this coming in a 2-1 loss at Memphis, in a 3-1 loss at home against Tulsa. So we see the foul here. And Nigro picks up a yellow. And good on Dennis Sanchez for having this team in this way this early in the year. A coach who's been just waiting for his opportunity. A guy who was starting out in the Sacramento system looking at players and, and structuring their academy on up to the first team, that whole pathway. Then he goes to Charleston Battery as an assistant to Connor Casey in that wayward year for the Battery, but he was on that staff. From there, he goes to Austin. He's the number two man for Austin FC2. They go on and they win the MLS Next Pro Cup last year. He has steadily risen to the ranks. Hot, up and coming, young name, gets his job and it's an attractive job is what he called it because he could come in and put his fingerprints all over it yes it was daunting to come in as late as he did and have to find basically an entire team technically the only player who's back year over year is xander romero on an academy contract so to put your fingerprints on it that way 
in a shorter time frame, and to have it looking like this already, you have to tip the cap to Dennis Sanchez. I don't know that he's going to get Coach of the Month in USL Championship for March because you've got an undefeated Louisville side with Danny Cruz and some other teams who have been good. But keep an eye on Dennis Sanchez and keep an eye on maybe a fourth goal here for Vegas. Looking for more. Wrong side of the post would have been the cherry on top. But they're pretty satisfied with the Sunday that has already been here tonight. This just goes back to the belief in creating the opportunities that they have in the second half for Las Vegas. The recognition on when they have the opportunity to drive, when they have to link up and combine around defenders. And sometimes, and going back to the story about Dennis Sanchez, sometimes having the ability to create a roster in the image in which you want to play is sometimes daunting because of the timing that he got hired Here's Nigro, that's out of play, and that should do it. There's the final whistle. Las Vegas Lights on the road. A resounding 3-0 victory over the Oakland Roots. Dennis Sanchez's boys are off and running. Back-to-back -back wins, back-to-back -back clean sheets here in 2024. What a second half. What a performance by Las Vegas. Three goals, three different goal scorers. They did it with patience. They did it with urgency in different moments, but they definitely did it with being decisive in the final third. They started with the Gannon goal, turning, taking it on his left. Samake adds the second, and then the drive in the final third goal. Noel, Valentin Noel, the finish from outside the 18. Decisive finishes. Final score brought to you by Anthem. It's Vegas three, Oakland nil. We're back in a moment to wrap things up from Pioneer Stadium. Oakland Roots Sports Club is back, and it's never been easier to get in the game. Season membership packages and single tickets start at just $25. Join us now at OaklandRootsSC.com. Do you like getting cash back on your credit card? A free coffee when you fill your cafe's punch card. A complimentary dessert with your restaurant order then you'll like getting a 5% discount on your electricity with Ava Community Energy's Bright Choice service. Visit avaenergy.org to learn more about Ava's low rates for electricity. How can someone so cute be so complicated? Someone so grown up still have so much growing left to do. We know kids aren't many adults, their still developing bodies and minds need specialized care, including physicians and care teams who focus on treating kids and only kids, which is why from everyday to emergencies, kids belong at UCSF Benioff Children's Hospitals. You've earned this, so hold it up high. This isn't a hobby, it's a lifestyle. You find diamonds in the rust to put your own stamp on stock parts, turning metal into murals and detailing every detail. Because it's the things you make that show what you're made of. You are a fighter, and this is your reward. Modelo, the mark of a fighter. Oakland Roots Sports Club is back, and it's never been easier to get in the game. Season membership packages and single tickets start at just $25. Join us now at OaklandRootsSC.com. Once again, your final score brought to you by Anthem. It's Vegas 3, Oakland 0. These fans are still here, still supporting their team. They were banging the drum until the final whistle blew, but it wasn't the result they wanted to see tonight. Now at 3-0 in the end against Vegas. We'll take a look at the full-time highlights, and we'll take you back to when that first goal was scored. 46 minute, Coleman Gannon, some help on the deflection, but it was a sign of things to come. And it was the team that was able to influence the second half. The first half, no clear-cut chances by either side. And then this turn and take from Gannon, left-footed, takes the slightest of deflections that could have thrown Paul Blanchett off. But still, the awareness and the decisiveness to take that and put his team up 1-0. And then just a few moments later, good ball slipped in. Good patience through the back. It starts with good buildup. And then the left-footed strike by 
Zamake finding the roof of the goal, beating Paul Blanchett. And that came after a spell where Oakland had responded really well from conceding that first goal. And then again, patience in the build from the back. And then seeing the space in behind to play in Valentin Noel. And he did the rest. And, and credit to the runners, Ricky Alba, the runners that created that space. But Valentin Noel tucking it away past Paul Blanchett for the third and decisive goal. Statistically, it doesn't look like it was that bad of a game for Oakland. They ended up winning possession. They won the shots. Shots on target were even. But sometimes numbers lie, and I tell a different story. This felt like Vegas' game most of the night. It did, and I, I think they did a good job of recognizing and picking and choosing when they could go direct and, trans and be transitional and when they could keep it, swing it from side to side along the back. And then I think later on as the match wore on with, with the lead, I think you're gonna concede possession a lot of the times as long as they, they let Oakland play through the back and, and have some moments where they were on the ball. But as you mentioned, 10 shots and for Oakland, you just gotta find that final action. Vegas had a chance to make another statement next week against San Antonio. Oakland a chance to bounce back against Monterey Bay. Thank you for joining us this evening. Oakland Roots and Bart want to make sure you get home safely. Visit bart.gov slash planner to plan your trip now. For the crew that makes this possible, my broadcast partner, Eric Dubransky, I'm Joe Malpas saying so long for now. A dominant showing. Vegas 3, Oakland 0. Happy Easter, everybody who celebrates. Good night. This copyrighted telecast of the United Soccer League Championship cannot be retransmitted, rebroadcast, or reproduced without the expressed written consent of the United Soccer League Championship.